orthogonality in Rn. So in this section, we generalize the notion of orthogonality of vectors in Rn from two vectors to sets of vectors. And in doing this, we will see that two properties make the standard basis of Rn easy to work with. So the first property is that any two distinct vectors in the set are orthogonal. The second property is that each vector in the set is a unit vector, or a vector of length 1. Now these two properties lead us to the notion of an orthogonal basis as well as an orthonormal basis, which are two concepts that we will continue to use frequently throughout our linear algebra journey. So without further ado, let's look at the definition for an orthogonal set of vectors. So a set of vectors, say vector v sub 1 through vector v sub k in Rn is called an orthogonal set if all pairs of distinct vectors in the set are orthogonal. So in other words, the dot product of say vector v sub i with vector v sub j is equal to zero whenever i does not equal j for all i, j equaling one through k. Now when we pause for a cause and think about this definition for orthogonal sets of vectors, we realize, wait a minute, the standard basis of Rn is an orthogonal set of vectors. We can easily see that all pairs of distinct elementary vectors in this set are orthogonal. We can even relate this back to our initial properties and see that each elementary vector is a unit vector. We can even take this one step further and say that any subset of the standard basis of Rn is also an orthogonal set of vectors. So this is just one quick illustration of the many possibilities of orthogonal sets of vectors. So let's continue to explore these possibilities with the following example. Determine if the given set of vectors forms an orthogonal set. So recalling the definition, we know that a set of vectors is called an orthogonal set if all pairs of distinct vectors are orthogonal. So in other words, the set of vectors, vector v sub 1 through v sub 3, is an orthogonal set if all pairs of distinct vectors have a dot product equal to zero. So we have three cases that we are checking here, and let's make sure we give ourselves plenty of room. So case one, we're checking the dot product of vector v sub 1 with vector v sub 2. So we have the vector negative 2, negative 3, 1, minus 4. And we are dotting this with vector v sub 2 with the components negative 2, 1, minus 1, 0. So we have 4 minus 3 minus 1 plus 0, which equals 0. So case 1 is good. Case number 2. We are checking the dot product of vector v sub 1 with vector v sub 3. So vector v sub 1 is the vector with components negative 2, negative 3, 1, minus 4. And we're dotting this with the vector v sub 3 with components minus 4, minus 6, 2, 7. And computing this dot product, we get 8 plus 18 plus 2 minus 28 which leaves us with zero. Woohoo! And last but not least, case three, we are checking the dot product of vector v sub two with vector v sub three. So vector v sub two has components negative two, one, minus one, zero. And we're dotting this with vector v sub three, which has the components minus four, minus six, two, seven. So computing this dot product, we have 8 minus 6 minus 2 plus 0, which gives us 0. Woohoo! So we can make our final conclusion and say that, yes, this set of vectors, vector v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector v sub 3, forms an orthogonal set because the dot product of all distinct vectors in this set r equal to zero, making this our beautiful final answer.